So you're new to intuitive eating and have decided to put the work into ditching dieting, putting weight loss on the back burner, focusing on reconnecting with your body's hunger and fullness cues, eating for satisfaction, working on unconditional permission to eat, and in essence, really just focus more on how and why you eat rather than the nuances of what you eat. Well, that's great, but that can sometimes feel a bit abstract at times, right? Uh, you know, a common issue that comes up is, okay, I want to honor my hunger and feel my fullness without allowing a diet to tell me how much to eat, but I really have no idea how much I should eat. How much should I put on my plate? How much is enough? What is too much? What about serving sizes on packages? Should I use that as a general guide, even though I'm not really counting calories anymore? Well, I'm Jeff Ash, certified nutritionist, personal trainer, intuitive eating coach, and you're listening to the Men's Intuition Podcast. So in episode 34, I talked about learning to connect with your hunger and fullness cues, and I shared a resource called the Hunger and Fullness Scale that can be a big help in this process of connecting with your hunger and fullness and really getting to a place where you feel confident in eating an amount of food that both provides for your energy needs while also not habitually exceeding your energy needs. But as I pointed out in the intro to today's episode, sometimes these things can be kind of kind of abstract, really. So let's start with the question, uh, what's a good starting place for an amount of food that will suit me in any given moment? Well, I can't tell you that. <laughs> Sorry, I, I wish I could. Uh, I don't know your body at all. I know what generally works for me, and, and I've learned you know, over time through experimentation and trial and error. That, that's something that I've learned over time. Uh, it, it's not always done with a lot of thought or reflection, to be honest. You know, uh, Over time, it becomes quite automatic in many ways, and hopefully that will be the case for you too. And, and I'm sure that if you continue to working through this process of intuitive eating, that it really will become much more automatic for you. But, you know, if you're struggling to know where to start, uh, try to keep it simple. I'd say start with uh, like one meal. Just pick one and, and don't worry about the others right now. Just like, for example, let's just use breakfast. Uh, you may find that you already have a good sense of what amount of food suits you at breakfast. Maybe you were just initially kind of overwhelmed because you were thinking about all these other different scenarios. You know, you thought, okay, I've got to figure out how much to eat at all of these meals. But then when you break it down and just focus in on one, you realize, oh, I actually already have a pretty good idea with this meal. So that further simplifies this process. But if you do realize that you already have that a good handle on that that breakfast, then that's great. And that realization can can often help kind of ease your mind, you know, when you're thinking, oh, okay, cool. Well, I'm feeling better about this now. I have a handle on on a, a part of this, and I, now I can move on and focus on one other aspect of it. You know, the hunger and fullness scale that I referenced in that uh, episode 34 that I mentioned at the beginning of this, this podcast, uh, that can be a great tool to use as you go through this process, but there are also some other things that you can do to uh, kind of assess an appropriate amount of food for yourself for each meal. Uh, the first is how do you feel after the meal? I mean, that's a really simple question. It can be difficult, though, to especially if you've disconnected from your body and and you're having uh, a, a real time kind of reconnecting with your body and how it feels. But that's a great place to start is how do you feel after the meal? Do you feel satisfied, stuffed, uncomfortable, painful? Uh, maybe not hungry anymore, but not really satisfied. You know, this is where that non-judgmental curiosity that I talk about a lot, it can be really, really helpful. Even if you're overly stuffed, uh, for example, you know, use that as information, not ammunition. Don't beat yourself up. Just simply say to yourself, hmm, okay, I guess six slices of pizza was probably too much, <laughs> right? Um, it may not be for you. Maybe you ate eight and you're saying, okay, eight was too much, but, uh, you know, you get the idea. Not because of calories or fat or carbs or looks from your friends or your spouse or, or whatever else. That's, that's not how you assess whether it was too much, but because you felt uncomfortable after eating that much. And so that's that no, non-judgmental curiosity, curiosity that I'm talking about. It's you connecting with your body, regardless of what anyone else thinks, regardless of what other people are eating or how much they're eating. You're connecting with your body and saying, how do I feel after eating that amount? 
Now, next time, you might remind yourself of what you learned the last time and go for maybe four slices. Say, okay, last time I ate six. That was probably too much because I didn't feel so great afterward. Um, and then so you try four and you, then you ask yourself those same kinds of questions. Was that satisfying? How do I feel? Uh, was it just as satisfying as the six that I ate the time before when, uh, you know, when, when you stop to think about it? Uh, how did you feel afterward? Oh, wow. I, I noticed I was actually more satisfied because not only was it equally enjoyable, but I also felt good afterward. I've, I found that to be the case for myself on a number of occasions with all kinds of different foods that when I really stopped to think about it, I was not more satisfied by eating more. Was that, and in the end, I turned out to be less satisfied because I didn't feel as good after the fact. And so, so now maybe you have an ideal portion size for pizza. So now for you, you you can file that away in your mind and say, you know, four tends to be about that that amount that suits me well. It leaves me satisfied and it also leaves me comfortably full, but not overly full. And then I can leave that meal feeling really good afterward. You know, over time, you can approach all the different foods and types of foods that you enjoy kind of using this approach. And you'll find, you know, as you experiment with different foods, and, you know, we all tend to eat a lot of the same kinds of foods or types of foods on a regular basis. They just kind of become a natural, normal part of our diet. And so over time, you'll you'll begin to figure out how much Mexican food, how many, how many uh, chips and salsa, how much of that with my meal leaves me feeling satisfied but not uncomfortably full after I leave the restaurant or maybe it's salad you know what what amount of salad is going to be the amount that I feel good with afterward or pasta or you know all, whatever dishes you include in your your normal diet you know something else that you should do is is assess how you feel later so not just right after the meal but later between meals at the next meal, that kind of thing. How was your energy? Maybe even later in the day or at the end of the day too. That that can be another time to assess how you feel. But how was your energy? You know, did it drop off quickly after your last meal? Uh, what was your hunger like between meals and going into the next meal? Was it extremely high, moderate, low? Again, you know, that hunger and fullness scale can really help you to kind of quantify this a bit more instead of just low, high, medium. That that hunger and fullness scale, if you've never looked at it, gives you a, a, a way of rating your hunger and fullness on a scale of zero to 10. And it, it gives you a good description of what each number is. And so it, I kind of like to be able to quantify things a little bit more other than just saying, yeah, that's enough or not enough, you know, <laughs> a lot or a little. Those are kind of vague. But uh, anyway, that that scale can be really helpful with that. But the whole the point is to to use what you notice about your energy levels to help assess, you know, quote, portion sizes. And, you know, if you regularly find yourself getting extremely hungry between meals or as you arrive at meals, you might reassess how much you're eating at each meal. And there are a lot of reasons why you may find yourself hungry, but this piece of information can be really helpful. And so, um, you know, it, it might tell you that you need larger meals or it may be that you know, you simply need to be more mindful of the content and size of snacks and, and that kind of a thing too. You know, a lot of dieters think snacking is unhealthy and so they'll avoid them when in fact often well thought out snacks can, can help keep hunger at a much more comfortable level and really help you uh, when it comes to kind of knowing how much to eat at any given meal. And so keep that in mind as you're thinking about meals meals and portion sizes and that kind of thing also don't leave out the impact the positive impact that snacks can have in that too so that can be a helpful uh, a helpful part of this process as you go through it as well all right so uh, a practical thing that you can do at a particular meal is it's to start off with a smaller portion than you might normally uh you know the only way this works though <laughs> you have to keep this in mind is that you need to have given yourself that unconditional permission to eat, or at the very least, uh, kind of a judgment-free permission to eat multiple helpings. Because if you just go into the meal and say, okay, I'm going to eat a much smaller portion than I normally do, and then stop at that point, because you feel like seconds or thirds would be, quote, too much, that can be a problem, and that's not going to be helpful in this process. But if 
this can be really helpful to start off with that smaller portion, going in with the understanding that I'm going to be able to have as many portions as I want. I'm just going to take smaller portions each time to kind of help me figure out what amount suits me the best. So if you did this, um, you know, you'd eat that smaller amount. Um, and so you start off with that smaller amount and then you're going to assess your hunger, your satisfaction, your fullness, uh, then serve yourself more if you still weren't quite ready to stop. So again, it, it, it sort of has this built in mindfulness component because you're likely going to need to take another serving because you intentionally served yourself much less than you know would be appropriate for, for a given meal. And, and so you're going to take that additional serving, but it provides kind of this natural breaking point where you can sort of pause and then reassess where your body is at that moment. Use that mindfulness, use that non-judgmental curiosity, and then determine, hey, yeah, would another portion be good? Yes, it would. Do I need at least as much as I had the last time? Yeah, I do. Or you might say, you know what, now that I think about it, now that I've stopped and paused, maybe you'll recognize, hey, you know what, I'm not hungry. I'm not satisfied, but I'm not hungry anymore. And so maybe I'll take a half of what I just took and see how that goes. And you take that half and you may say, Okay, well that was good. I'm I'm actually satisfied now. Or you may say, you know what? I do need a little bit more and you, maybe you get three or four more bites or another half serving or you know, whatever the case may be. But hopefully you get the idea of where I'm going with that. Um, you know, I've actually been using this myself uh, since having my gallbladder removed almost 2 weeks ago. I've had to really change up my my eating a fair amount and and I'm in this stage where I'm I'm kind of relearning how much is a good amount to eat in a single sitting, both the total amount and the amount of certain foods. Uh, I, I've been starting with far less than I'm accustomed to and then mindfully eating a bit more or stopping you know, based on how it feels. It, it's been actually working out pretty well for me and I'm already starting to get a better feel for how things are going to, to change going forward. Of course, that may change as I get farther out from my surgery and that kind of thing, but but it's it's been really helpful because I have noticed that I can't eat as much in a single sitting anymore, not because of hunger and fullness as much as my body doesn't feel very good. I get a I'll get a stomach ache or some GI discomfort if I eat an amount that I used to eat and feel comfortable with. And so I'm kind of having to figure that out again. And so it's very much like the process of starting from from scratch again. I'm I'm using this in my own life to kind of help me to dial in what amount of food is going to satisfy me, but also leave me uh, feeling good afterward. And what that's meant is that I have actually been incorporating a few more snacks over the course of the day because I can't eat as much in a single meal now. And so what that means is that I may eat two snacks between lunch and dinner instead of one or two in the morning instead of one, that kind of a thing. Or I may eat a snack after dinner, uh, a little more substantial snack after dinner because I didn't eat as much at dinner and my body still has the same energy needs that it did. Well, right now it's a little bit less because I'm not able to do ninja. I'm not able to go to the gym, but you get the idea. My, my body, once I get back to my normal activity, is going to have those same energy needs. And so I'm going to need to make sure I find a way to provide those energy needs for myself, given that I can't eat as much in a single sitting. So of course, I'm going to have to eat uh, maybe a little bit more often, an extra snack here and there, that kind of a thing. But you'll find that for yourself too. You may not have any kinds of uh, GI issues, or maybe you do, and maybe you've been having difficulty navigating IBS or Crohn's or some other kind of digestive uh, distress that's going on. And this can be a great tool for that too, because you're, you're going to be dialing in what's going to work for your unique individual body and needs. Now I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and wrap up this episode by just touching on, uh, the idea of reading labels for serving sizes, because this is another question that, that often comes up related to this topic. And I don't think this will, be helpful really to, to read labels for serving sizes. I really don't think that that's helpful when you are working on intuitive eating. Uh, maybe it's helpful for getting a ballpark idea of how many people it will serve, you know, that kind of a thing. If you're, you're using it for meal planning purposes for your family or, or that kind of thing. But I don't think it's a good tool for determining your individual serving sizes. You know, we all have different amounts of different foods that are 
kind of quote enough for us. And you know, I like a large serving of pasta. Of course, <laughs> my pasta servings, at least prior to my gallbladder removal, are probably kind of four quote servings if you were to look on the back of the the pasta box, uh, you know that kind of a thing. So I've always a serving of pasta for me is is several servings for someone else or several servings according to what the label says. But if I use that serving size on that label on that package to dictate how much I ate. I'd likely leave every single pasta meal completely unsatisfied because one serving is just not enough. And fortunately, even with my gallbladder gone, I'm able to eat more than a package single serving. I'm still able to eat a, a, a reasonable amount that's it's not as much as I used to, but it's enough that's, that's leaving me satisfied. So, so I'm okay with that. Uh, but you know, while I, I really enjoy like roasted Brussels sprouts, for example, I don't like a huge amount of them. It's a flavor, a texture, a sensation that I enjoy, but not in a huge amount like pasta. It's just a completely different feel. And and you probably have foods like that too. It's like, oh, I like a small serving of mashed potatoes, or maybe you like a very large serving of mashed potatoes and a small serving of of meat or vice versa. Maybe you like a heaping plate full of vegetables and or vice versa. You, again, maybe you don't like particularly large amount of vegetables, that kind of a thing. And so, um, you know, like with Brussels sprouts, I don't know what a serving size of Brussels sprouts is, but for me, six or eight of those little little things are about enough, any more than that, and it's just too much. Even though I may not be full or anything like that, it just sort of hits that that wall where, yeah, I've had enough of this. And so, you know, labels for planning a meal it, it are okay, but make sure you avoid using them as a guide for your individual food intake. It's likely that it will really interfere with honoring your hunger and the satisfaction factor. And those are two key principles of intuitive eating that we, we never want to overlook. All right, so I hope you found that short little discussion helpful. As always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop me an email or reach out to me on social media at intuitive.eating.men on Instagram. That's where I'm most active. Love to hear from you there. Shoot me a DM. Uh, if you want to interact even more with me and you're a dude, uh, sorry, ladies, it's just for the guys. Uh, you can head over to hopedrivesme.com and check out the Equip to Thrive Men's Community and where you can find support, encouragement, and interact with me on a daily basis, as well as a community of other intuitive eating men. And so if you think that might be helpful for you on this journey, I'd highly encourage you to check it out. And uh, there's also a course that you can take along with that if you want as well. Those two things, uh, again, just head over to my website and you can learn all that you need to, to learn there. And so until next time, remember that how and why you eat is far more important than the specifics of what you eat. Mm -hmm.